morning and welcome to North United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Kalesita Uluave Tuifua. I'm so glad you're able to join us this morning for our second Sunday of August online worship service. Today, we will have a special guest speaker, which is one of our certified lay speaker, uh, Tom Islam. He'll be sharing our message. As we continue to be faithful and uh, remain at home during this uh, time of isolation, be mindful that God is with you as God is with you. Right at this moment, as you're sitting in your home, the comfort of your home, let us come together and worship our God and give thanks for him of what he has done in our lives for the last four months that we have been isolated at home, my hope and my prayer that you and your family are in God's spirit with peace, love, and strength, and the hope of God's promise as we worship in truth and in spirit. I lift my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The one who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Our opening hymn is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in Still our refuge, 
Join with me for our opening prayer. Our gracious and ever-loving God, we come before you with a grateful heart. Acknowledge of the wonderful works you have done for us and of the deep and abiding love you have for us and for all God's people. Search our hearts, fill our soul with your indwelling spirit who whispers to our soul that all will be well if we trust in you. Shine your light before us that we may see our path to you and to your kingdom on earth. Amen. Have a moment of silence before our affirmation of faith. And together let us affirm our faith with this Apostle Creed, page 881 in your hymnal. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. blessings and also lift up any prayer concerns first and foremost we give thanks to the God to God for the life that we each share and his presence his love his peace Lord in your love and mercy hear our prayers we give thanks to the Lord for each and every one of you members and friends of this congregation as we continue to faithfully serve the Lord we pray for you O Lord and ask that God give each and every one of you strength and courage during this pandemic. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for those who are sick, who are struggling with health issues, who are very concerned for the uncertainty of the future, what's happening in our world. We pray that God's presence and his peace be upon you. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the Palantine family as uh, we say goodbye to Brian on Friday morning with the family. Pray for Anita, Lisa, and the girls for the loss of a dear brother, a father, a son, and a faithful member of this congregation. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our community. We pray for the essential workers, doctors and nurses, the officers, the firemen, the service men and women. We pray for the leaders to seek God's wisdom. And we pray for our world, O oh Lord, for he is the creator of heaven and earth. And all that trouble you, let us come together in the presence of God and pray.
with each other. At worst, the guns and the murders and the killing. We repent and confess of our sins, O oh Lord, and ask for your mercy and for your grace. O oh Lord, you are our hope that you love us unconditionally. We know and struggle with our imperfections and our shortcomings. But in you, O oh Lord, who always there, you are our hope for the world. And it is in this hope that we live and move and have our being. This morning, we lift up our church members, our congregations, O oh God, for your presence, for your love. We pray for those who are sick and hurting in many ways. Give them peace and strength to face their situation. Give them love, O oh Lord, and they remember of your presence that they can call upon your name, for nothing will separate us with the love of Christ. O oh Lord, we ask you to help us be the change in this world. Give us courage to be the blessing to others as you have been a blessing to all of us. Oh Lord, we pray for this community that we continue to stand firm and be strong and be faithful and be a peacemaker. Oh Lord, we pray that we always seek your wisdom to make right decisions and make right choice. We pray for our young people as they return to school next week. We pray for our students, oh God, that you bless them with your presence. We pray for the parents who struggle with uh, finding a way to take care of their family. We pray for all the ministries that we continue to be the light and the salt in the world. Come Holy Spirit, come and be with us, especially our guest speaker this morning as Tom is faithfully sharing the word of God. We pray that you speak through him to our congregation. And for those who are listening in in our service this morning, May you abide in them and bless them and you know the desires of our hearts that you may fulfill with your love. Hear our prayers as we come together to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and thy glory forever. Amen. There are two scriptures for this morning. The first one comes from the Gospel of Jesus Christ, written by Dr. Luke, chapter 9 verse 57 to 62, the cost of following Jesus. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have dents and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, First, let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And the second reading comes from the Gospel of Jesus Christ, written by Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, 20. And this passage is the mission statement of the United Methodist Church. Let's hear the word of God. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very age, to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Good morning, everyone. Exactly five months and one day ago, on March the 8th, the last time we had an in-person Sunday morning worship service here, I shared a message about spending Lent living out the five purposes we were created for. Today, I'd like to share a little more on the mission we were made for, bringing others to Jesus. I didn't mean by using the name of Billy Graham in my message title that I'm very successful at this mission even though I lack his resources, and I'm ready to share some handy tips on how to be successful. Quite the contrary, actually. I need the help I can get. The best tip I can offer is to pray for opportunities, to pray for the ability to recognize opportunities to share the gospel. From July of 2015 until March of this year, on behalf of two different churches, I participated in the ministry to convalescent hospitals by leading some trivia activity and reading aloud. At times, what I, what I read was from the Bible, I was doing okay in spreading the word, but the primary reason for my presence was to give the residents a break in the routine. On the other hand, the second Monday visits to see this care center, which we have done for years until slowed down by the pandemic, has most certainly spread the word of God and have been participated in by Pastor Calasita and also by lay members of the church. There are many scriptural statements confirming the need for every Christian to be involved in our mission. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, which Pastor read a few minutes ago, is one. But that's also called the Great Commission. Here are four more. Mark 16, 15, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Luke chapter 4, excuse me, 24, 47. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. In John chapter 20, verse 21, again Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and, the, and to the ends of the earth. Now bear in mind, those statements are found in five different books of the New Testament. Kind of get the, you kind of get the idea Jesus really wanted us to get it. And Jesus was talking to his disciples when he made those statements. They were not educated men, no, sem no seminary graduates there. It's also not an ap ap option. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, this is the Bible, Living Bible Translation, anyone who allows himself to be distracted from the work I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now that really resounded with me. We can be certain that when Satan finds out we're working hard on our mission, he will try to distract us. Our mission is the continuation of Jesus' mission on earth. The Great Commission was given to every follower of Jesus. It was not to be interpreted as a great suggestion. If we are a part of God's family, our mission is mandatory. To ignore it would be disobedience. Our mission is a wonderful privilege. It's a big responsibility and also an incredible honor to be used by God. There are actually two great privileges involved, working with God and representing him. In 2 Corinthians verse 6, chapter 1, the Apostle Paul writes, As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Telling others how they can be have eternal life is the greatest thing you can do for them. If someone you knew was suffering from cancer or AIDS or even COVID-19, and you knew the cure, it would be criminal to withhold that life-saving information. Even worse is to keep secret the way to forgiveness, purpose, peace, and eternal life. 
Our mission has eternal significance. It will impact the eternal destiny of other people. It was more important than any job, achievement, or goal we reached during our time on earth. In John chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus said, All of us must quickly carry out the task assigned to us by the one who sent me, because there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. end quote. We don't need to drop everything and become full-time evangelists. God wants us to share the good news where we are. We should continually look for people God puts in our path with whom we can share the gospel. Our mission gives our lives meaning. William James said, quote, the best use of life is to spend it for something that outlasts it, end quote. The truth is only the kingdom of God is going to last. That's why we must live God-centered lives committed to worship, fellowship, spiritual growth, ministry, and fulfilling on our mission on earth. There are people on this planet that nobody can us will be able to reach because of where we live and what God has made us to be. If just one person will be in heaven because of any of us, that life will have made a difference for eternity. God's timetable for history's conclusion is connected to the completion of our commission. Speculating on the exact timing of Christ's return is futile because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. How many people do you know of who have predicted Jesus' return incorrectly? Lots. If you want Jesus to come back soon, best we focus on fulfilling our mission, not figuring out prophecy. Be ready to face diversions and distractions from Satan. Remember we are living for God. Remember the admonition of 1 Peter 3.15. Quote, be ready to always to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope you have in you, but do so with gentleness and respect. And Jesus, remember also Jesus' statement to his disciples in Matthew chapter 9, verses 37-38. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Amen. As we present our gift and offering, I wanted to give thanks to God for each and every one of you that you faithfully share your pledge and your generosity in supporting our ministry. Even though our doors have been closed, but your gift have supported our ministry, our church, and keep up with all that we needed to be a church here in Coronado Hills. Uh, I know COVID-19 continue to impact our lives in so many ways. As we all try to overcome the many challenges that come with it, we are very blessed as you have been supported, our church family, and you help us through. Uh, even though we are not able to worship in church, we do have bills to pay, and uh, keep up with the maintenance of this church. So we are asking if you're able to please continue to keep mailing or chopping off your pledge at the church. Uh, at this time, we don't have any online banking, but here is the routing number. I put it on the screen and also the account number um, that you may uh, transfer your fund electronically and the bank is uh, Chase Bank. Again, thank you so much. 
as we um, hold your, I invite you that you hold your gift and we'll say a prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we hold our gift in our hands with our faith and trust in you that you bless this gift, offer to you with heart full of love and compassion. And may this gift increase in numbers. And may this gift bring joy and peace and bring the gospel to every corners in this community and throughout the world. And I pray that you continue to bless this congregation so we faithfully serve you in the midst of this pandemic with our faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Lord, direct his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.